You're tuned in to The Dish TV, the talk show from SRI International that highlights our people, products, and technology portfolio. This series will focus on the Quantum Economic Development Consortium, or QEDC, supported by the National Institute of Standards and Technology and managed by SRA International. The QEDC is a consortium of stakeholders that aims to enable and grow the U.S. quantum industry. I'm Renita Malhotrahora, Head of Marketing and Communications. In this episode, my guest is John Randall, CEO of Zyvex Labs, a nanotechnology company focusing on atomic precision fabrication. I asked John why atomic level precision is critical for quantum technology development and why Zyvex Labs became a member of the QEDC. And nanotechnology in general is just uh, making things very in very small size scale. Uh, officially, it's anything below 100 nanometers. The approach that uh, Jim Vonier, the founder of Zyvex, took, though, uh, was sort of the end game of nanotechnology, where uh, we're trying to work uh, at the atomic scale and make things with atomic precision. Very small sizes, that fits in really well with quantum, or the idea of quantum. Indeed. Um, was that the plan from the get-go? Uh, the plan from the get-go was not especially uh, to be quantum-centered. Uh, it was to be centered on, again, the, the manufacturing precision uh, and, and the, with the idea of really getting to atomic precision, uh, uh, a la uh, uh, Feynman and Drexler, uh, and to try to develop a, a fairly universal uh, uh, manufacturing technique that would dramatically improve manufacturing precision, which has always been one of the main ways that human technological progress moves forward. So what kind of applications uh, does uh, Zyvex Labs work towards right now? Right now, we have seen the real opportunity in quantum, and we're really focusing uh, pretty heavily on quantum. Not, ab not absolutely everything's on quantum, but uh, with the signing of the National Quantum Initiative Act, and in particular, uh, the creation of the Quantum Economic Development Consortium. Uh, there's a funny thing that's happened with uh, nanotech. There has not ever been a really significant industrial interest in nanotechnology per se, outside of the semiconductor industry, which is really already on its own uh, sort of technical roadmap following Moore's law. Uh, but with the signing of the National Quantum Initiative Act, Boy, the difference in if you look at who has signed up to the Quantum Economic Development Consortium, it's a who's who of major corporations and small corporations and quantum startups. Uh, there is uh, a really significant industrial interest in quantum, and we believe that that's going to lead to uh, a, a real opportunity to really take advantage of some of the technology that we are developing and are continuing to develop. Uh, with some significant support from the U.S. government. When we talk about Zyvex Labs' uh, specific role in the development of the quantum supply chain, you mentioned in your notes that uh, um, your company specializes in atomic precision fabrication. Can you explain what that is? In the long term, it's a, it should be lead to a manufacturing process that is in control of where every stinking atom goes. Uh, uh, in, in, the other, in other words, the ability to make uh, essentially perfect devices. Now, we know that uh, for some structures and some devices and some functions, uh, it's not required to get every single atom in the exactly the right place. But uh, for, for certain things, uh, if you're making quantum devices, for instance, a very high level of per perfection uh, to lead to very long coherence times, and, and, and very accurate uh, control of energy levels and tunneling rates is extremely advantageous. So the problem is we need to go with, I believe in the long term, integrated uh, circuits, probably on silicon. And we have this wonderful manufacturing technology, but it does not have the required manufacturing precision. So we need to dramatically improve the manufacturing precision to really succeed in the long term. Uh, and even in the shorter term, the, the uh, uh, superinducting qubits and the ion traps are limited by the 
precision of the technology that's making them, which is largely integrated circuit technology, even the analog devices that control the qubits are made with the same technology and therefore are made fairly sloppily. And, and uh, they create some of the noise that limits uh, the, the coherence time and the error rates uh, that are making the noisy intermediate scale devices that we're making now. So I really think that we're really, really well positioned with a, a technology. We uh, are developing a, a, a lithography, a patterning making, pattern making technique that literally has atomic resolution and ultimately we believe can be developed as a digital technology and with error detection correction and essentially be able to make perfect, at least perfect patterns that we can build our devices off of. So that, that's the technology that we're very excited about and we think there's a great opportunity for us there. With this kind of precision patterning, this kind of lithography uh, extend to the development of those uh, other quantum technologies as well? To the, to the extent that they, they go uh, solid state, then yes. Our particular technology uses a scanning tunneling microscope in order to do the patterning. As the layperson understands all of this, I think it's critical to understand how some of this technology works, if, if not everything. Um, so I'd love for you to explain what a scanning, uh, a scanning tunneling microscope is and how it works. The way a, a scanning tunneling microscope works is, is we have some surface that we're interested in exploring. We bring a tip down until it's a tunneling distance. In other words, the range of uncertainty in the position of that electron is comparable to the gap between the tip and the surface. And so we put a small bias, a few volts, between the sample and the surface, and, and it has to be a moderately conducting surface that has some free electrons. And so the electrons can just jump magically from either the tip to the sample to the sample to the tip. And it's exponentially dependent on that distance that the tip is away from the surface. And so we set up a certain bias, and then we have a little uh, actuators that move the tip up and down, and we ask it to set up a particular set point current, might be one nanolamp, let's say. And so the uh, little control loop moves the tip up and down until it achieves that one nanolamp. And then we also use actuators to move the thing laterally. And as the current increases and decreases because of atomic corrugations on the surface, the tip moves up and down, maintaining that one nanoamp current. Uh, and then if the tip's sharp enough, then you can actually see the atomic structure on the surface. Uh, so it's a relatively simple device. It just moves the tip down close to a surface, sets up a, a, a a set point current, usually on the order of a nanoamp or less, and in a few cases more, and then moves it around laterally and just adjusts the tip height to maintain that set point current and allows us to see, as it turns out also, to do lithography on that atomically, on that atomically flat surface or moderately flat surface. The QEDC, of course, brings all of these stakeholders together to explore sales opportunities, business development opportunities, collaboration. Is that the main reason or the reason that your company joined QEDC? What am I missing? Especially in quantum computing and in quantum technology in general, we're in the very early stages. And we're in a uh, largely, uh, especially for quantum computing, pre-competitive stage. And there have been some wonderful examples um, uh, uh, to especially for the government investing in uh, classical digital computing uh, with Symmetech, uh, where we had uh, competitors collaborating uh, because it, it's uh, something that's going to take uh, a lot of effort and the more that we can collaborate, the better. And so uh, uh, I really, really, uh, my very first meeting, I was uh, uh, really impressed with uh, Joe Braz uh, uh, and, and I was excited when uh, my uh, friend Celia Mersbacher was uh, uh, made deputy director. And uh, they are creating, as we talked about before, there's lots of different things that can get in the way. Supply chain, workforce, standards, 
enabling technologies. And, and so they have separate groups working on this and there's conversations at, uh, that are happening that would not have happened without the leadership of Celia and Joe. And I think a real shout out has to go to Carl Williams at NIST, uh, who was uh, one of the guys that really uh, showed some leadership and, and, and really helped uh, put together the National Quantum Initiative Act and argued strongly for the Quantum Economic Development Consortium. And so we're extremely happy uh, uh, to be a part of this. We think they're gonna be uh, an extremely important ally to US companies. And they realize that some international cooperation is, is going to be useful, but this, this is an international technological race. And this is not a party we want to be late to. And so I think with their leadership and, and the, the, the wonderful engagement you've seen from virtually everybody, uh, Lockheed Martin, IBM, AT&T, Google, uh, uh, GE, uh, uh, Raytheon, uh, Boeing, uh, it just it's a who's who of, of American technology leadership. And so I, I feel very strongly that they're going to really help out with uh, developing quantum technologies.